Let's dive into the summary of the first chapter of this book. The title of the first chapter is The Clock is Ticking Circadian Rhythms. The title suggests the author really is making the point that circadian rhythms are a really important part of sleep as well as for the body in general. He starts laying up some foundations that, that he explores a lot more throughout the book. First point that he makes is that in the modern day and age that we are living in, especially the way that our work days are structured, the thing that's really taken the biggest hit is our sleep and the habits that we have around it. And he really attributes this bad habits that, that are formed to the way that we have structured our modern day lifestyle, technology, stress, abnormal schedules, you know, working throughout the night, that kind of thing, as well as always just being connected in terms of having access to emails and instant messaging and those kind of things. So kind of lays out that problem that he's going to be addressing throughout the book. And he, um, I guess he's just laying that foundation for that. All right. So once the author has kind of outlined this problem, he then takes a step back and kind of create and produces this analogy for us to use. And what he asked the reader to do is just to imagine that you have been shipped off to an island of sorts where there's no access to technology and we're really living in a primitive way in terms of just living off the land and, and that kind of thing. And so he, he kind of asks you to imagine what your day would look like and he says, towards the end of the day as night approaches it's obviously going to get colder and darker and so we might light a fire sit around the fire have some food that kind of thing and then drift off to sleep and as night progresses and morning approaches it's going to get lighter and warmer and this kind of triggers us to to wake up in a natural way and we might get up here our bladders or our bowels get on with our morning and probably spend the morning trying to search for food and we kind of just repeat this process day in and day out what he's alluding to and, and what he kind of uh, closes off this analogy with is that these are our natural timings of things so he says like our natural um, circadian rhythms revolve around this kind of process where it's a kind of a sleep wake cycle and these things are triggered by um, the temperature and light that we kind of revolves around the sun right and this is where the author starts bringing in the definition and the idea of circadian rhythms and it's at this point that he takes the time to define what circadian rhythms is in his own words and i'm kind of paraphrasing here he refers to circadian rhythms as our internal 24-hour body clock so obviously a day is 24 hours and it's our internal clock that runs and helps us keep track of where we are in that 24 hour period that we call a day. And this helps us regulate um, our different bodily functions, such as the temperature of our body, our sleep schedule, our eating schedule, thirst, hunger, that all those kind of things are regulated by these circadian rhythms. The note that he makes, which is, in, um, which is kind of important, is that these circadian rhythms are actually work in conjunction with the rotation of the Earth. So obviously, um, as the Earth rotates, one side of the Earth is going to be experiencing day, which means that um, the light from the sun is shining on that side of the Earth, and then the opposite side of the Earth is experiencing night. And he says the, that rotation of the Earth is vital for circadian rhythms. An important note that he makes, and it ties in nicely with a quote at the end of the ch chapter, these circadian rhythms are a a product of millions and millions of years of evolution and so that is definitely something to think about we have kind of adapted to go through these circadian cycles in order to live productively on earth he does include a diagram at this point which um, kind of displays the typical uh, circadian rhythm of a an average person so i'll just put this up on screen so you can have a look at it but obviously this is a reference from the book so this is not my diagram this is straight from the book itself and then moving on he kind of just speaks a, a bit about how important light is as a signal for our circadian rhythms. So in order for our, our circadian rhythm and cycles to be able to, to move in this constant circulating structure, it kind of needs a beginning and an end point. And so it needs some input from the environment in order to function properly. And he just lets the reader know and he, he's just reminding us that light is one of the most important signals from the environment that help regulate the circadian rhythms. He does make a note at this point in time or in this point of the chapter that blue light is especially troublesome in the modern day and age and that we as humans are very very sensitive to blue light because it actually affects our melatonin secretion which then in turn obviously affects our sleep schedule so basically 
blue light um, is tricking our bodies into thinking that we should be awake because there is daylight and because they're coming from artificial devices like smartphones and laptop screens, TV screens, that kind of thing, it really is cr um, creating a problem for us and he refers to this problem as what we call junk sleep, so it's where you are sleeping throughout the night but the, the biochemical cascade in your body is not running as efficiently as possible due to the effects of the blue light. While the author is talking about blue light, he moves on to, to explain how important the sunrise and the sunset is to our circadian rhythms. They kind of act as constants within that 24 hour cycle. Obviously as humans being uh, generally awake during the day and sleeping during the night, the sunrise and the sunset act as points in the day to allow the body to know when it's time to go to bed and time to wake up. And this all revolves around light and temperature. So there are receptors in our body in our eyes and on our skin that can detect changes in light sources and temperature from the environment and these will then trigger biochemical cascades that will put us in the ideal states for either being awake and alert or going to bed sleeping and kind of kicking off that restorative process that sleep does produce. It kind of just like wraps it up all nicely and um, explains that circadian rhythms help us be productive in our day and just gives us that constant certainty that we can schedule our days around and he does mention that there are important uh, or there are specific times within a typical circadian cycle or rhythm that it is ideal to do certain types of activities so the examples that he gives is an average person shouldn't try and rush things in the morning waking up getting out of bed and just hitting the day at full speed is not the most ideal thing way to do things because as you wake up there are certain chemical or biochemicals in your in your system in your your bloodstream that kind of thing that are just pulling you out of the sleep state and so you're not you might not be the most alert at that time of the day and the second uh, example it typically we don't want to be doing exercise right before bed as the effects of the exercise biochemically might affect your sleep cycle stuff like adrenaline and cortisol is going to the process and the biochemical the chemicals that we need um, to be secreting in order to to put our mind to rest so that our body can rest and fall into our ideal sleep patterns right so that's basically what i've pulled out from that first chapter he ends it off nicely with a quote from professor russell foster and i'm basically paraphrasing here but basically professor foster is saying the modern day humans trying to go and live these lives that are super stressful and adjusting our sleep schedules and just being connected all the time and just devaluing the need for sleep. He's basically saying that we are being very arrogant in the sense that we are trying to fight four billion years of evolution, which has allowed us to adapt to live on this earth. So I thought that was quite interesting. So that's it for chapter one. We'll, we'll cover chapter two quite shortly.